Hey everybody, Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick update on my experience with the Microsoft Surface Book. Priced at $14.99 US for the base configuration, Microsoft has gone in a different direction here altogether than what they've been doing now in its fourth generation with the Surface Pro line, which is make the argument that this is a tablet that can legitimately replace your laptop. Instead, Microsoft has decided to take a different approach altogether beyond continuing to give us the Surface Pro lineup. Well, they are going to replace your laptop, and that's where the Surface Book comes in. Now, it's built in large part off of basically the exact same components as the Surface Pro 4 and takes most of its design cues from the Surface Pro line as well, at least in its current form. Bigger display, 13 and a half inches, 3000 by 2000 resolution on that. Uh, new technology, at least Microsoft employing a new name, Pixel Sense for the displays, both in the Surface Pro 4 as well as the Surface Book. We've got a new integrated pen that has been tweaked, redesigned slightly, 1024 levels of pressure sensitivity, which is certainly a lot more than the 256 found on the, the uh, previous generation Surface Pro uh, 3. And this is something you'll find also in the Surface Pro 4. We also have the ability to magnetically lock it onto the device now. Something that may seem insignificant, but was a huge misstep or miscue in manufacturing previous generations where there simply wasn't a place to put the pen. Now, when it comes to the Surface Book, again, this is a laptop. Don't underestimate uh, the form factor in any shape or form. This is over three and a half pounds. It is a heavy machine. Uh, again, 13 and a half inch display. You can see the Microsoft uh, Surface Power Connector, which pretty much was standardized in the third generation. That's where they got it right. Uh, magnetic, not going to snag or pull. Uh, attached right there, I disconnected it. It was not actually powering the machine presently. And really the Surface Book gives you much of what's already in the Surface Pro 4, but in a, again, a larger form factor and with a more substantial keyboard. Also, a lot of the things that you would find on a laptop are here on the Surface Book. And uh, I would liken it more to an Ultrabook, much like the Surface Pro 4 itself. Remember, they share much of the same internals. So there's the power jack. Uh, right there for the magnetic charger that I just removed. You also have a mini display port out there for 4K 60 Hertz output uh, if you choose to use it. Your volume rocker and power button on the top left side of the machine right there. Uh, ventilation all around the top half of the unit. I'll explain why in a moment. And then we have a full-size SD card slot and two USB 3.0 ports. Uh, now, what makes this unique is that, of course, it is a convertible. You can actually use the 13 and a half inch tablet all on its lonesome, by its lonesome rather. Uh, we have a rear and front facing camera. You're looking at, uh, uh, excuse me, five megapixels on the front, uh, eight on the rear, and they are definitely a major improvement from a previous generation. Well, that didn't exist here, but at least in the Surface Pro realm. So you're looking at the keyboard for the first time. Uh, backlit keys, normal size keyboard, uh, really, I would say one of the best trackpads on the market. A lot of design cues taken when it comes to the keyboard from Apple. Uh, Microsoft has been after Apple and basically the market share that they seem to occupy unchallenged in many ways by other PC makers, figuring that they might be able to actually chip away at that. And I think it's a fairly good bet, which is why Microsoft out of the gate positioned the Surface Book as a MacBook competitor. Uh, they even went as far as to say that it could outperform any MacBook uh, on the market. Now, whether or not that's true is really uh, an argument that can come down to different processes and what you actually plan to do with the device. Uh, clearly, this has a touchscreen input uh, and a pen input integrated all into one, two separate batteries, by the way. I did mention that this is a convertible and the tablet half does detach, uh, which has some pronounced issues, I would say right now, since this product is in its first generation, a little bit of infancy. And that base model uh, at 1499 isn't going to buy you that much uh, in the way of processing power uh, when you compare it to something like the Surface Pro 4. Uh, for example, the Surface Pro 4 I have here is the i5 uh, with 256 gigs of storage, 8 gigs of RAM, the same Intel 520 integrated GPU you'd get with the base model of the 1499 Surface Book. Granted, you will need to buy a type cover uh, if you want to complete the experience of replacing a laptop with a Surface Pro 4. Uh, you could use a third-party keyboard easily for a lot less money than the 130 or 160 commanded by the Surface Pro 4. But the internals, you're actually getting more uh, internal space there, 256 gigs, as opposed to where you start out with the Surface Book, which is at 128 gigs. Uh, in addition to that, 
Uh, the Surface Pro 4, just want to point this out. The micro SD card slot is hidden, stowed away. Here, the full-size SD card slot, which I welcome wholeheartedly, leaves the card exposed, and that does annoy me quite a bit. Now, this won't be an issue for a lot of you. You're going to just be looking to dump data on and off of the SD card. Uh, in my case, I thought it was a nice added component to always have that uh, flexibility to add storage, especially when SD cards are so fast these days and inexpensive, but Microsoft decided to cut that out of the fold. Now, it is amazing what they've crammed in here, even if you do consider it to be a very steep premium. I still think there's nothing else like it on the market. Now, conceptually, absolutely there are things like it on the market, and Microsoft made sure to differentiate rather than have this be just another Lenovo uh, Yoga-type machine, which has been on the market for a long time now, similar footprint, similar uh, overall capability, a low voltage processor, uh, and definitely less expensive. They had to make something unique, and they did exactly that. So uh, in the base model, I mentioned you do not get the NVIDIA uh, GPU that I have here in this i5 model. Uh, that does step you up from $1499, uh, I believe it's to um, $1799, so it is a significant step, considering that the uh, integrated NVIDIA solution here only has one gig of dedicated RAM and really is not going to be a game changer for you unless you're leaning on this for light activity. So whether we're talking about running uh, any, uh, I would say, computationally intensive software that it, you know, can actually leverage that I won't say paltry, but better than integrated is really all I can say about the NVIDIA solution here, which, by the way, does not get uh, dedicated driver updates from NVIDIA, but rather from Microsoft, another, th another element I'm not in love with. Uh, it's not really, to me, a game changer in any form or fashion, and I kind of shed light on this right when I did my preview that you couldn't have... Uh, incredible expectations for gaming when we already know that gaming laptops themselves uh, really can't bring uh, to the table what at least desktop class users are accustomed to. So uh, I didn't really expect much here, and that's exactly what it delivers so far. You're talking about 720 to 1080p gaming, and mostly with older titles. If you try to run anything that's current, expect to run everything at the lowest possible settings in order to get 60 frames, if even that. So don't have high expectations when it comes to gaming. Think of the GPU more as offsetting some of the processing power that the low-voltage i5 or i7 that you have uh, on board, depending on which model you go with, which configuration. Uh, it'll offset some of that uh, processing power that the machine potentially needs to deal with software you might use on a regular basis. Uh, but when it comes to construction, the build, this thing is a tank. Um, I do find that the bottom half feels a little bit hollow, but I'm being critical. Uh, otherwise, I really can't take any points away from Microsoft. I'm not in love with the hinge style that they came up with here. A lot of users like it a lot. I'm also not in love with the physical button that allows you to detach the tablet. Now you can see I pressed it, nothing happened, press it again. Now we actually got the ready to detach sign. And you know, when you're trying to remove this, it's not gonna just pop off, so you do have to get leverage. I may have made that look more difficult than it needed to look. Um, now I mentioned we have separate batteries. There is a battery in here. Um, Microsoft claims that this, that this entire unit uh, is going to net you 14 hours of battery life. That is completely false, uh, like most claims when it comes to battery life on machines like this. Uh, you're looking at maybe two, two and a half hours at best on the tablet portion itself. Uh, once you have it docked back on the machine, you're looking at a total of, I would say, closer to 10. Do not expect to get to that 14 number. Uh, in fact, you may see under 10 hours, at least in my experience, I have. Uh, in terms of how the machine performs, well, very similar to what you'd expect from the Surface Pro 4. Again, just in a larger form factor, uh, the new pen that I mentioned earlier uh, that has been revamped, uh, rubber eraser tip now on the back end, which is really nice that you can actually physically use to erase text without worrying that it's going to scratch the screen. Uh, furthermore, uh, you also have the ability uh, to long press this to pull up Cortana to do searching on the internet if you choose to do so. Uh, you can also double tap it to do a screenshot. So they've integrated some more capability with the pen, realizing that they really need to make this their brand. They have to make it uh, so present that people are going to think of the pen as a differentiator in the same way Samsung's done that with the Galaxy Note, rather than just a tacked on accessory to try to differentiate and really end up netting zero. Uh, but so I've covered gaming, at least in my experience so far. Uh, when it comes to traditional computing, again, Basically, the exact same experience you'll get on the Surface Pro 4 for less money, uh, but in a more robust, I would say, form factor. It's not only heavier, uh, you're going from a little over 
you know, a little under two and a half pounds with the Surface Pro 4 and a type cover to up to over three and a half here, or roughly three and a half and change. Uh, so you definitely will feel the weight difference, and it's really at the end of the day to get, in my opinion, the difference of the screen real estate, 12.3 13.5, 3x2 aspect ratio. The display is very nice. Uh, I want to point that out. Is it a game changer for me? No. Uh, and that's because really it's missing a few things on the tablet side, like battery life, uh, kickstand, things that I think really are going to be seen in the second generation. In fact, if you ask me what I really would have liked to have seen out of a product like this was that the keyboard be optional. Uh, Microsoft start throwing in the type cover for the Surface Pro line, make this the optional keyboard, and make it so that it could actually be paired with the Surface Pro as well. Now that would have been, in my opinion, slightly more ingenious, but Microsoft had other plans. Maybe this is laying the groundwork for such you know, a direction where accessories will go in that uh, shape and form, because in my opinion, having the additional battery that's under the hood in here is something that most uh, users would want. And if this was the way the, the um, type cover or power cover that we had once upon a time has been reincarnated, then let it be available for the Surface Pro line as well. Maybe we will see a dock like this eventually available for the Surface Pro line. Of course, the Pro line is not right now manufactured with the same, I'll show you the actual components. I did not before when I detached it. It does not have uh, the same mechanical uh, spots here on the bottom that you can see right now uh, in order to lock in the tablet when it's mounted. Uh, also, uh, of course, we would be missing this hinge that would allow the articulation that this does when it's actually mounted, which does freeze when removed uh, from the machine, just to let you know. Um, but I really think that somewhere down the road, uh, maybe next year, that Microsoft will make, I would say, a major a revision improvement in my opinion in marketing this because I did want a larger Surface Pro 4 just not in the form of a laptop and those of you that do want to have a laptop I think it would have been much smarter to make this the optional accessory uh, make this compatible with type covers throw a kickstand on it and let it be uh, not a laptop just putting that out there and it's not that I'm upset with a laptop it's just again ironic that here we are looking at a laptop from the company that basically told us we don't need one. Now, you can dock this the other way. And again, nothing on this except the headphone jack, the cameras, headphone microphone jack, I should say, the cameras, the power button, and the volume rocker. And I can dock this right on. And it will now allow us to basically flip this around and use this in a completely different capacity. But here you are holding a tablet that is much heavier. Uh, now we're up to laptop weight. Uh, in order to draw on it, um, many people have said, uh, or I've heard, I should say, that they're happy with the drawing or inking experience on this. Uh, they like using it on a flat surface. I have to imagine that if they had the kickstand on here from the Surface Pro line, uh, people would be much happier with it when it's detached. Granted, again, not a lot of battery life when it comes off of the keyboard. So, you know, again, maybe this is next-gen stuff. Speakers, very good. Uh, something that the Surface line already established, and this just builds upon. Slightly louder than the Surface Pro 4. Uh, again, that's really just a recurring theme here where we get a slightly larger, slightly improved, a bigger, a supersized experience than what you'd get from the Pro 4. And that's why uh, everything is only marginally better, uh, quite frankly. Uh, in fact, the display on the Surface Pro 4 lineup actually looks better in my opinion. That may just be that it has better pixel density, even though they're pretty much identical, um, it just seems like the screen is a little bit more rich in general. Um, things a little more washed out here, but still a very good screen. Do not get me wrong. 99% uh, of sRGB coverage here. You're not getting what you would in the Vio uh, Z canvas, but still very good. This is as close to you know anything other than the canvas right now in a portable form as is the Surface Pro 4. Just remember, exactly the same internals. The only real difference here besides the form factor and the keyboard is that you can get that dedicated GPU, which I've already explained is really not a game changer. It's just something that might help, but in my opinion is pretty much a money sink or suck, depending on how you like to phrase that. Uh, so I like this product a lot so far. Uh, I do think it's a step in the right direction for what we're going to see next generation. As far as being an early adopter on this, you really must have been one of those people that either is an Apple consumer and was waiting for Microsoft to do something like this, make something that looks like your favorite uh, PC, which is an Apple right now, uh, a Mac, or you have to be one of those people that was just hoping that one day 
Microsoft was going to make something nicer looking than, or any PC maker would, uh, than the MacBook Pro. And that's also what they delivered on. So this is, in my opinion, definitely more about looks than it is anything else. Granted, this has function and capability unlike anything else uh, that it's lined up against, but there are going to be a lot of competing products. After all, this is not a brand new theme. This is one that's existed for a while. Uh, detachable screens, nothing new. We still have a ton of 360 type devices, as I mentioned before, uh, that exist. And that's where something like this, I won't say gets lost in the shuffle, but the uniqueness isn't quite what Microsoft, I think, would have hoped uh, for this product. And don't get me wrong, it's been selling really well, sold out, uh, three to six week back order. So this product seems, at least on first sale, to have done really well. Uh, but there are issues, whether we're talking about with the integrated GPU here, I've noticed uh, quite a bit of, um, I would say, communication issues where the system isn't sure whether it's using the dedicated GPU in the keyboard or it's using the Intel integrated, which once this is undocked, it does lean on the Intel integrated 520 chipset because the NVIDIA GPU is in the keyboard. So once they have lost connection, you can't lean on the NVIDIA solution. So... Uh, Driver crashes pretty much daily from this machine. I've also got the infamous popping sound coming out of this, but I also have that on two other Surface Pro 4s. So for me right now, I don't even have a Surface product from this late October launch that doesn't have the speaker pop, for those of you that are wondering. Uh, when it comes to just about everything else here, it works as expected. You know, it does output the 4K at 60 hertz. It does allow you to do extraordinarily light gaming with that GPU. Uh, but I wouldn't consider this a gaming machine, so that's why I can't really justify telling any of you that you should be picking it up over something uh, like a Surface Pro 4, somewhere where you could spend uh, less money and possibly get more. And I said possibly, there's the pop right there, because it won't necessarily uh, net you more, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, you can hope that it does, uh, but it, you know, it really comes down to what form factor you're looking to have. Right now, we're kind of in the as I mentioned before, the Lenovo uh, uh, flip mode here uh, because it is bent over backwards. And, it, you know, Microsoft has put their own spin on things, no question about it. Uh, I think that this is an incredib incredibly popular product that in the second gen is really going to be a game changer. Here, it was really more about making a statement and putting a new product out there that put them in a new uh, market, which is laptops, as I mentioned, and I have said this over and over again, instead of getting, uh, a, you know, a tablet that could replace your laptop, you're getting a laptop that can replace your laptop. <laughs> um, as far as it replacing your tablet, not really, because even though we do have a 13 and a half inch tablet here, I mentioned before the battery life is pretty bad. Um, I've gotten as little as an hour and a half, hour and 40 minutes, so I wouldn't call that a tablet. I would just call it being able to separate for the sake of doing so. But when it comes to engineering, uh, they definitely pulled off a feat here. I mean, there's no question about that. Uh, another issue I want to mention, the attaching and detaching of this keyboard, which it just uh, gave me the cue. It's ready to be detached. Let's see if I can get it. There we go. That was a little bit awkward doing it uh, reversed here. But what I can tell you about this, as you see all the fingerprints there, screen blacking out on its own, uh, is that there's a display driver crash right there, which I'm probably responsible for. I'll take credit. Um, and it's trying to reconnect right now. Uh, and this is what I'm talking about. When you think of first-gen products and the growing pains that occur with them, well, this is directly one of those things. So whether it's the driver crashes, the popping, I can't explain. So I can't even write that one off and tell you that that's acceptable uh, because it may never be rectified. I mean, people who had it, when you, you know, look back in history uh, on the Internet, anyone who had it in the first or second-gen or third-gen even, uh, got stuck with it unless they exchanged it out. So not so much that I can uh, tell you to do uh, with regard to correcting the popping noise, except hope that a uh, firmware update is going to go out, but in all likelihood, if you can exchange, you should. Uh, that doesn't mean that you're going to find a good one, though, because as I told you earlier, three different Surface products all have this problem, uh, in my possession at least. I must just be one lucky guy. But uh, overall, it is a very innovative piece of hardware. I mean, think about all of the um, engineering that went into this, that the entire PC is right now in this uh, extraordinarily sleek, uh, almost silent uh, housing. It does get quite loud, though, if you push it, if you're gaming or doing anything, again, computationally intensive running software that really will push this machine, its processor, to uh, 
uh, the edge, then it's going to make noise to match that like any laptop would. Uh, so do expect to hear it. Uh, there have been some moments where it has uh, started to go a little bit crazy on me uh, without anything intensive actually happening. That I'm going to relate to drivers simply because I have nothing else to point to uh, right now. If I had one other final critique, I wish some of the ports were on the body of this, or at least, as I mentioned before, a kickstand. Uh, I know they wanted to go minimal. I know they wanted to justify that you were getting the keyboard and this was part of the whole experience. Uh, but when you look at the entire package, I just think that it would have been better suited even if they could have integrated a micro SD card slot onto this. I mean, they did cram an incredible amount in here. So again, do not think that I'm knocking Microsoft because they did a great job. Again, that touchpad, one of the best in the business. Uh, pretty good battery life, not amazing. But, uh, you know, it has everything that most Ultrabooks, even some laptops have. Uh, and it hits the wall there. I wish that it could do uh, output to four, uh, excuse me, two 4K displays, uh, but for that you'll need the dock, uh, which is backwards compatible with all the other generations, and of course works with the new Surface Pro 4 as well. There was another one of the speaker pops. I don't know if any of you are catching them, but hopefully you won't in real life if you pick one of these up. Essentially any time it interprets that audio is about to resume or play back, it gives us a little pop just to let us know the audio is coming. But overall, Again, construction is great, design, I will go as far as saying very innovative. I won't say amazing because this is not a new idea what Microsoft brought to the table. It's just really a new shape. And I think it has, again, a lot of promise uh, for what could be done in the second generation when Microsoft does react to customer feedback, when they find out that maybe what I said earlier is what customers are really after, which is a, bigger, a larger Surface Pro 4 or the option to, if they're going to spend 130, 150, or even 200 for an optional keyboard, let it be one with a battery, maybe a GPU option like we got here, uh, and make it compatible again with your next gen, your Surface Pro 5, since uh, it does seem to have missed the boat here. Uh, and that's pretty much it. I mean, for a first gen product, I think they did an incredible job. Uh, if I was, if I sounded negative through the course of this update, it's merely because I do hold Microsoft to a high standard. They've been the only innovator in the tablet sector uh, for really the last four years by pushing the Surface Pro 4 and making computers that were quality uh, in a tablet form factor that really could challenge whether or not you needed to take your laptop anymore. And that's exactly what I think the Surface Pro 4 represents, is the culmination of that maturation of that entire product line. And it does a really great job, and keep your eyes peeled for my update on that as well, uh, because it's, in my opinion, a really legitimate piece of hardware, not to say the Surface Book isn't, but you are going out more on the experimental wing with Microsoft here, uh, and really trying to satiate, again, what I think so many PC users have been waiting for, which is a computer that actually is nicer looking than anything Apple makes. Uh, as far as it being more powerful, that's, a, like I said, a whole other area of contention. I mean, you can spec out a MacBook Pro with a quad-core processor. You can't do that here. Next generation? Probably, because Microsoft might realize that this design may not have been the best uh, all around to do for the, you know, in the first place. Um, the pairing with the dock, I mentioned earlier, sometimes it attaches properly, sometimes it gets a little confused. Forget about the display, drivers actually crashing. That seems to be an inherited thing that's also with the Surface Pro 4. Sometimes it'll recognize your keyboard, sometimes you have to do a fresh boot because if you detached it um, before doing that fresh boot, it no longer can see the type cover. Uh, I feel like that bug carries over here and that's why they made a mechanical switch to try to band-aid that. But again, that's just speculation on my behalf. I'm not an engineer. We know that already. And I specifically do not work uh, in any shape or form for Microsoft. So I can't speak to why they went with that physical mechanical switch. Will that break down? Anything, everything, I should say, really does eventually. So I'm not in love with that idea. I like the magnetic attachment of the Surface Pro uh, style type covers a lot more. But then again, you get a real keyboard here and then that extra battery life, or I should really say the real battery for the system in there. So its principle in every way to what Surface Book represents. So no question, this is one of the best laptops I've ever had the pleasure of both using for work and playing with. Uh, the pen sensitivity, by the way, I didn't really touch on that much because I don't use it that much, uh, but for note taking, definitely improved. For artists, absolutely improved as well uh, because you do now have that 1,024 levels of sensitivity, which is a world of difference uh, from the 256 of previous uh, years, generations. Uh, and Entrig has just gotten better and better since Microsoft purchased them and really made them, again, a principle of the Surface Pro brand. 
Uh, it wasn't just a pen accessory. Again, it was the identity of what Surface represented. And that's why you see it getting a revamp in the form that it has. So I really like what they've done there. Um, and there's even another uh, button integrated uh, I mean, multiple buttons integrated, I should say, into the pen, which you just didn't have uh, in the previous generation. So it's a far more functional, more thought out product uh, than we had in the past. And, you know, I only expect to see more when we see a revamp of this product next year. But a lot to like here. Again, whether or not or which model is right for you is going to boil down to exactly what you need. Keep in mind, none of this is upgradable. So you're going to want to get it right the first time, folks. Uh, I recommend the base model. Uh, even if you think you need the GPU, you'd be surprised that even though it may offer twice the performance of integrated graphics on the Surface Pro line or the Surface Book base configuration, that's not going to net you a whole lot. So uh, also, one power profile for this machine. You do not have multiple profiles. Not something I'm in love with, but it's a clear sign of Microsoft saying our engineers made it this way and this is the way it has to run. Uh, no bloatware on here, really a clean system, has that retina or facial recognition combo, uh, hello windows to recognize you, so no fingerprint scanner here, but you don't really need it uh, with that 5 megapixel front face or combo with uh, the recognition software bundled. So a lot to like, the Surface Book definitely, I would say, a game-changing product in that it will pave the way towards uh, larger form factor Surface Pros eventually. Uh, how it's going to mutate and evolve who knows? You know, I've thrown some ideas out there that I would like to see. Again, at the very least, throw in a kickstand, Microsoft. And uh, if you can, make it a little bit thicker and give the tablet end a little bit more battery life so that they can exist independently uh, of one another. Uh, that is really my biggest critique of the product because, after all, Microsoft worked for three years in, in order to get the kickstand right on the Surface Pro uh, and even longer to get the type cover where it's at. So, uh, it's good to see they made a great keyboard and a really nice uh, top half of a laptop, even though everything, again, is crammed into the top half. Remember that. This is actually what's going to get hot right around here. Uh, you won't cook an egg on it, but I've seen it randomly get hot uh, without anything crazy going on, as I mentioned earlier. So I think this is all about firmware, watching the product mature. Those of you who don't want to be on that bandwagon should avoid the Surface Book, in my opinion. Those of you who are more than willing to grow with it, as I have with every uh, version of the Surface Pro, I think you're going to love what Microsoft has put together. What you're not going to love is how much it's going to cost. But if you're a fan of the Surface Pro lineup, nothing new. Uh, this is just you know Microsoft taking a stab at an even higher price point to test the market, and that's exactly what they've done. I mean, now the base price is $14.99, so uh, something where they've bumped up the base price also of the Surface Pro 4 to $8.99, uh, ensuring that if you're stepping in as a new customer, you, you know they're making more money and doing so in an intelligent fashion because after all, uh, the designs these machines aren't getting more expensive for them to make, but, but rather the opposite, less expensive because they have their designs in place already. Even though this is a first gen, of course, Surface Pro 4 is not. So this is basically pure profit for Microsoft. They just made it a little bit thinner and uh, the same internals as the Surface Book. Uh, any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. And of course, as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.